This video is about the geometric mean. It's actually really nice. To understand the geometric mean, we have just one big question, and that is how do we use similar triangles to show geometric means in a right triangle? This is gonna be lots of fun because we have to set up a few things. We have to understand what are similar triangles. We have to understand what's the geometric mean. And then once we understand those things, we can set up the geometric mean and look at the results. What are similar triangles? Well, those are triangles that have congruent angle measures and whose sides are proportional. Proportional? Oh, that means that the sides, when I set up the ratios of corresponding sides, they're all equal. Let's look at that. 6 over 4, that is 1.5. 7.5 over 5, that side and that side, because they correspond. When I divide 7.5 by 5, that is 1.5. Here, that side corresponds to that side. 4.5 divided by 3 is 1.5. The ratio of all the corresponding sides is 1.5, which is called the scale factor, by the way. And that means those triangles are similar. Another thing that we have to know about triangles is this third angle theorem here, and it is very powerful. If we have two angles of one triangle that are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the third angles of the triangles are also congruent. What does that mean? Look up there in the yellow. There, that angle is 20. There, that angle is 20. Down there, that angle is 90. There, that angle is 90. The sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. 180 minus 90 minus 20 is 70. 180 minus 90 minus 20 is 70. That is equal to that. And as long as this angle is equal to that angle, this angle is equal to that angle, the third angles are always equal for any pair of triangles when it meets these conditions. Now this is powerful also because it lets us show similarity. We said that similarity exists when all of the angles are corresponding and congruent. When that's the case, that implies that the sides are in proportion. Now, the reason this is so powerful, this third angle theorem, is because it says, really, we don't need to show that all three angles are congruent. We only need to show that two of them are congruent, because if two pairs are congruent, then the third pair is necessarily congruent. So for similarity, all we need to show is angle, angle. Angle, 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 angle. So these triangles are similar. The geometric mean. Normally, when you think of what a mean is, you would think average. It's the average value. I'm going to add up all those numbers. I'm going to divide by the number of numbers there are, and that gives me the mean. Well, that mean is actually called the arithmetic mean. For the geometric mean, instead of adding and dividing, I'm going to multiply and then take the square root. So for the geometric mean of any number of numbers, it's going to be, if it's, say, n numbers, I'm going to multiply all those numbers together and then take the nth root. If there are three numbers, I'll multiply all three numbers together and then take the third root. Since we're only looking at two numbers here, we're going to multiply the numbers together and then take the square root. One thing to note about this is that it's actually the positive square root that it's the geometric mean. Remember, when we take the square root of a number, we're going to get both a positive and a negative number. We're only looking at the positive number here. So this is the formula there for any two numbers, a and b. Multiply them, take the square root. For example, 2 and 8. I'm going to multiply them together. That gives me 16. I take the square root of 16, and that gives me 4. If I take the usual arithmetic mean, 2 plus 8 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean aren't going to be the same number. 
To construct the geometric means in this right triangle right here, we've got three steps. First thing we need to do is construct this right triangle. So I've got this teal right triangle right here. Notice that I put the right angle up there at the top. The next thing I need to do is drop an altitude from the right angle to the opposite side, the hypotenuse. So from the right angle to the hypotenuse, I drop that altitude. And then the third step is where I need to set up the ratios for the similar triangles. Well, the question is, what, what are those similar triangles? How do, I, how do I have similar triangles here? Angle A over here. <sighs> this angle plus angle B over here, well, that's equal to 90 degrees, right? Okay, because this angle right here is 90 degrees. 180 minus 90 leaves 90 left over for angles A and B. Awesome. Well, when I drop my altitude here, I create two new triangles, triangle ADC and triangle CDB. Now look up here at angle C specifically. Angle A is still there as the angle that we started with. When I drop the altitude down here at point D, I get a right angle CDA. That's a right angle. So doesn't that mean that the angle formed by the altitude and side CA has to also add to angle A to give me 90 degrees? So basically, that angle plus that angle is 90 degrees because that's 90 degrees. And that angle plus this little angle here, ACD, has to be equal to 90 degrees too because we've got that 90 degree angle down there. Well, similarly, since this angle here, BDC, is 90 degrees and angle B over here is still the same thing as it was, up here, this little angle formed by the altitude and side BC has to also add to this to give me 90 degrees. That means this angle up here is the same value as that angle right here. And this angle right here, ACD, is the same value as this angle over here, angle B. And so we've got three triangles all with congruent angles, meaning we've got similar triangles, which when you separate them, it makes a lot more sense to set up the ratios. So here the green triangle is our original teal triangle, A, B, C, and then the yellow triangle over there, this one, it's triangle A, DC, and the orange triangle over there, well, that's just triangle CDB. So we've got three triangles that are similar to each other. And because of that similarity, we can set up the proportions over here. And the way we set up those proportions for these three triangles, for it to make sense, we're going to do a side compared to a side is equal to another side compared to another side. So if you look down here, A, C, that's the side right here. It corresponds to A, D over here. If you notice in my fractions, A, C is in the numerator here. A, A, D is in the numerator there. And then for this fraction here, B, C, well, that's just the side down here at the bottom. And C, D is the side down here at the bottom. And then between this triangle and that triangle, again, AD, that's the leg over here, and CD is the leg over here. And we're comparing that against CD, which is right there, and BD, which is right there. Remember, all three of these triangles came from this triangle up here. And we can go through that same process with all of the sides and we get this list of ratios right here. And what we're gonna be looking for in this list is repetition. 
because we want to find a geometric mean somewhere in these ratios. You're going to see some repetition. Here we've got AD over CD, and here we've got CD over BD. When I want to solve a proportion, I have to cross multiply. So here I'm going to do CD times CD, and here I'm going to do AD times BD. So I've got CD squared is equal to AD times BD. And when I solve for CD, it's going to give me this formula right here. So CD is going to be the square root of AD times BD. In a similar fashion, I've got AC up here in the numerator and AB in the denominator, AD over here in the numerator, and AC again in the denominator. So when I cross multiply, I get AC squared is equal to AB times AD. And when I solve for AC, I'm going to get that formula right there. And then I've got BC over here in the numerator, BC over there in the denominator. So when I cross multiply those two things, I'm going to get BC squared is equal to AB times BD. And when I solve, for BC, I get BC is equal to the square root of AB times AD. In our original geometric mean triangle, we can see that there are some interesting relationships. First of all, CD in our original triangle, that's just the altitude that we dropped. And that altitude is actually equal to the square root of AD, this part of the hypotenuse, times BD, that part of the hypotenuse. Uh, similarly, AC is equal to the square root of AB times AD, so the side over here, it's equal to the whole hypotenuse times just the AD segment down here and square rooting that. And then BC, same thing. So BC, that leg over there, it's going to be the square root of AB, the whole hypotenuse, times just BD down there. And we can use these relationships over here to find all kinds of unknowns. And we could even take this a step further. I could drop an altitude in the medium triangle here and the small triangle, and we could explore those relationships. We're going to get the same type of results there and we can just continue doing that on to infinity and looking at those fun, fun sequences. So what can we conclude from all of this? Well, when we drop an altitude in a right triangle, we can set up the ratios between all of the smaller triangles that make up that larger triangle because we have similar triangles. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why the geometric mean is actually nice. Thank you for watching.